Hi guys, so Nick Robinson managed to interview the former Home Secretary and potential future Tory leader, Suella Braverman. Now for those who don't know Braverman, she's an arch Brexit here. She was a member of, and perhaps a leader at one stage, of the ERG, the group of Tory MPs which includes people like Brexit Hartman Steve Baker and Jacob Rees-Mogg. Well, she was asked a very simple question by Nick, which you could imagine any Brexiteer could answer. Which industries are better off because of Brexit? She laughed and then couldn't answer the question. Have a listen. One quick question. Which industry is better off as a result of Brexit? Can you name more? Listen, I think uh, there are definite benefits to Brexit. Can you name an industry that's better off? Can you name easy. an industry that's better off? They're very, it's very easy to try and poke holes with Brexit. Brexit is the undoing of 40 years of legal and economic union. It will take some time before we do see tangible benefits. And I, I believe we no, are already on, yeah. seeing okay. benefits. Well, I, yeah. no, I will say, yeah. listen, we have developed a, a control over our uh, trade policy. Sure. We have sure. uh, entered an into no, no, se over 70 trade deals. Now, that's going to be benefiting uh, so many industries around the country Fair with point. open markets and it's greater... Oh my goodness. Okay, so first of all, she laughed when she was asked the question. Because even Suella Braveman understands it's a stupid question. There are no benefits to Brexit. There are no industries that are better off because the UK left the European Union. So even Suella Braveman finds the question stupid. I hope that's the reason she was laughing. But then she went on to say that it's easy to poke holes in Brexit. Why? If it was a good idea, you shouldn't be able to poke holes in it. If you have clear examples of why it's better to be outside the European Union, then nobody should be able to poke holes in that. She's admitting that it's easy to poke holes in Brexit. Why are you a, why are you still a Brexiteer? How can you continue to defend Brexit if you're saying, well, it's easy to poke holes in Brexit. And when you're asked about an industry that's benefiting, you laugh because you think the question is so absurd. Then she went on to say about how, well, we have to wait. <laughs> like Jacob Rees-Mogg, I believe, said the benefits of Brexit would arrive in 40 or 50 years time. Brexiteers back in 2016 said as soon as the UK voted to leave, the benefits would come rolling in. They didn't say what their benefits would be. And after the referendum vote, they didn't say what the Brexit benefits would be. But they said they would arrive. Then it was, well, we need to leave. We haven't left yet, so we need to leave. So as soon as we leave, then the Brexit benefits will come rolling in. Well, they didn't. Now it's, you have to wait. Like, at least Jacob Rees-Mogg is giving um, a time frame. Suella Braveman is giving an indefinite time frame. They will eventually arrive. But then she contradicts herself later, in a few, sec a few seconds later, by saying, well, we actually have some benefits now. And then you could hear how she was trying to think on the fly. Um, uh, trade, yeah, trade. <laughs> Our trade is much better. We have better trade deals. Although that's not true. So, remember, she used to be a member of, or per perhaps even the leader of the ERG, the European Research Group, the Eurosceptic anti-EU group within the Conservative Party, who convinced Theresa May to go in one direction and then convinced the Conservatives to put Boris Johnson in charge. And she can't come up with a Brexit benefit for any sector, any industry. Now, on the other side, we can list off a whole range of sectors that are struggling because of Brexit. Uh, healthcare, hospitality, farming, manufacturing, uh, the service sector. Now, she could have, when she was pushed, she could have actually lied and sort of got away with it. She could have said the AI sector is benefiting because of Brexit. Or she could have said the insurance or financial services sector is benefiting because of Brexit. Because it's not, they're not benefiting, but she could sort of get away with it because of the, the lack of understanding people have about the ins and outs of um, the European Commission and what it's doing in regards to different aspects of the financial sector. But she didn't even do that. <laughs> she couldn't come up with anything. And she just laughed at the question, which begs the question, who the hell still believes in Brexit? Because it seems that Suella Braveman doesn't. And Nigel Farage doesn't either.
Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.